Additionally, the 4th of July is a day for fireworks and cookouts. But we should take the time to also appreciate the deeper meaning of Independence Day. The founding of the United States of America was an unprecedented achievement of enormous moral and practical significance. America was the first and only nation founded on the idea that your life belongs not to a king or to the pope or to the state, but to you to pursue your values, your happiness. The founders believed it was the government's job to protect this right. On July 4th, we celebrate the founder's vision of the sovereign individual who is free to live by his own independent judgment and to pursue his own life and happiness. Hey, welcome back to Courageous Media. Happy 4th of July. Thanks so much for joining us. Got a fantastic show for you today. Just a little reminder of why this holiday is so important and why it is so meaningful. The United States of America was born a country born on the idea that all men are created equal, endowed by God, their creator, with inalienable rights that cannot be taken away by the state, by the federal government, by a government agency, by any king anywhere. Those rights are ours. The right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and as enumerated in our Bill of Rights, the right to speak freely, to freely assemble, to freely worship, the right to defend ourselves with weapons, all of those are inalienable rights that cannot be taken away by the state. And today, I just want to play a beautiful rendition of our national anthem, followed by something you don't often see, which is the second verse of the Star Spangled Banner, which I think encapsulates the soul of our nation when it was founded, and hopefully the soul that we can get back to, because that's what we need. So without further ado, let's dive right in. beautiful rendition of our national anthem. Absolutely stunning. And now without, like I said, the second verse, and I'd love to you for pay attention to the lyrics on this one, because I think they're so important because when our national anthem was written, I believe the soul of our country was different and it's why it worked as a limited government free society. And this is what we need to get back to ladies and gentlemen, if we want to truly be free. One question was raised about how we teach our young people and I'm a former Marine, and I became aware that there are two verses, and we need to hear the second verse. Thank you for your service. Which says, Oh, the Spirit ever, when free men shall stand between. Praise the power 
God bless you, sir. Absolutely. Pay attention to the lyrics because it is so true that America has been rescued by heaven more than once. There is no way on God's green earth we should ever have been able to beat the British Army and the British Navy. They were the premier empire in the world. Their army dwarfed ours, their navy dwarfed ours, and yet somehow a group of peasants and rabble formed themselves into an army and defeated the Redcoats defeated the vaunted British army to the point they didn't have to defeat them worldwide. They just had to defeat them here in our home so that we could have freedom. And then don't forget after that, freedom was almost snuffed out just 40 years later in the war of 1812. And we miraculously survived that. And then the split, the civil war, 50 years later, again, God intervened that we could heal our differences and come back together as a nation. And then look at World War II. Three major battles stick out where God miraculously by his divine providence set the circumstances that we would not be eliminated as a nation. First, in Pearl Harbor, as resounding a defeat as that was, our aircraft carriers were not there. None of our battleships had sailed for maneuvers, none of that, but our three aircraft carriers, which were just now becoming the linchpin and the pinnacle of, of, of naval warfare, but before then hadn't been, were not at Pearl Harbor. If they had been, the West Coast would have been wide open for invasion. And then at Midway, a battle again we should not have won. But because of divine providence, the much superior Japanese fleet first attacked Midway because in their head they had to get rid of the hard airstrip so that no, so no attacks could be launched against them from Midway. So they bombed Midway first while they were looking for our carriers. And somehow in that first raid, they did not succeed in destroying the airstrip. So... In a fateful decision, Japanese leadership of Yamamoto and Nagumo decided that they would rearm their airplanes with bombs to send a second strike against Midway. And in that window, when all their planes were ready to go, they found the American carriers, which they knew were the most dangerous threat. And now they were stuck. Do they fly with land-based bombs against our carriers? Do they fly against Midway? No, they said Quickly, we've got to rearm with torpedoes. So they started rearming their airplanes. But in that, in that time frame, our dive bombers found those carriers and were able to start bombing runs with decks fully loaded with fully fueled and armed airplanes. And we destroyed carriers left and right, four total. And then finally, in the Battle of the Bulge, the Germans absolutely should have been able to push through to the coast. They had superior numbers. They had the element of surprise. They had everything they needed. But what they didn't have was the divine providence of God and American soldiers who would fight on regardless of the odds. They didn't have a, a general like George Patton who told his fellow generals in Montgomery and Bradley and others, I will pull out of a fight. I will march 72 hours. And I'll re-enter a fight. And they said, you can't do that. It's impossible. Your men can't handle it. And he said, my men will handle it. They said, how? He said, because they fear me more than they fear the Germans. And they realize that if we don't do this, we could still lose this war. And owing to people of great linguistic prowess, the commander at Bastogne, when he was presented with a German offer of surrender, his prolific and phenomenal response, oh, nuts, no. It was over and over again that God delivered this great nation and we need him to deliver it again. This time from a tyranny that comes within, comes from within and not from without. Courageous Army, thank you so much for joining me on July 4th. I hope, I wish you and your loved ones a phenomenal day celebrating faith and freedom 
and the fact that we are no longer under a king, but we have a representative democracy. We have a constitutional republic where the law reigns supreme, not individual men and women, not leaders, not dictators. And we need to get back to where the law and the constitution reign supreme. The Democrats have managed to shred the constitution for the most part, but we have a chance November 5th to begin to right the ship. I need your help. I need you to donate, volunteer, get out in the arena of ideas and fight and drag 10 people with you to vote. And would you please like this video, subscribe to this channel, share, share, share the heck out of this and comment so that we can bust out of this algorithm. I need your assistance. If anybody's willing to really support the show, you can join me as a member on YouTube or on Locals. Would love to have you. And we're also looking for a core group of 100 people to help push videos. If you would like to be a part of that group, would you please let me know? Hat tip to John Susadik. I hope I pronounced that right, sir, who sent me the first of the national anthem videos. Phenomenal. Thank you so much for your support. And now remember that God is good and he is sovereign. Hey, man, it'll all be good in the end.